have you ever been in a dynasty trade conversation and someone says, okay, can you just add in that player? Because I just, I, I he hasn't done anything, but I, I just want him on my team. Or I, I just think the value will just make it a little bit more even. If you can throw in that, that low end, you know, wide receiver 50 something or wide, running back 60 something on my, on, on your team right now, like nobody's really wanting him. The, those are the guys in this video that you should be holding on Okay, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to bring you five players that I'm going to be telling you why you should be holding on that could potentially have hidden value going into this season. Make sure you comment down below who was your favorite must-hold Dynasty players. And as always, let's get straight into the video. All right, and my first player on this list that I've been seeing a lot of trades of random thirds or just random players just getting him off their team because of not wanting or not believing in him, and that is Rashad Bateman. And what is the biggest concern with Rashad Bateman so far and what he has done? Okay, he's done nothing. But the biggest concern are the injuries, okay? The injuries that he has been bringing in each and every year. And let me, I'll, I'll even break it down. I brought you a screenshot here of his injuries, right? In 2021, a groin strain, grade two groin strain where he has, was in and, in and out of the games. And then he had, he re-aggravates that groin again. He pulls that groin in November in 2021, right? And then he has a Liz Frank injury there with a, a sprain on his foot where he was essentially out for, of the, of the, the remainder of the season in 2022 in this past year struggled all season with that hamstring injury that was just annoying and we kind of saw the the inconsistencies and the frustration with Rashad Bateman saying that if I could just stay healthy if I could just be on the field what can I do for my team how can I produce and you saw them bring OBJ in last year he couldn't stay healthy. Rashad Bateman couldn't stay healthy. It was Zay Flowers. Mark Andrew gets injured. And nobody was producing besides Nelson Aguilar, right? How frustrating is that? And if Rashad Bateman can stay on the fields, that can speak volumes. And let me tell you why I believe in Rashad Bateman. It's because of the, right, the truth and the faith that this head coaching and this coaching staff and this organization has put in Rashad Bateman. Think about it. This has been one of the best wide receivers draft class in a very, very long time. Not only when it comes to top tier talent, but depth. They don't get a wide receiver in the fourth round in Tez Walker. Now, if you've been following this channel, we're not big believers in Tez Walker. I know early in the offseason, a lot of people believed before the NFL Combine, Tez Walker was a top five, top top 10 in some people's rankings. He was nowhere near that for us, okay? He was nowhere near that for me specifically. I'll speak for myself and not for Zach. He was nowhere near that in my rankings. I just never, I just didn't see that. People thought he was going to be an early to mid second round pick. He falls in the fourth round. What's another reason why we should believe in Rashad Bateman is because of this depth on this offense, right? On this, on this Ravens team. They don't have too much of a weapons threat on this team when you think about it. They have Zay Flowers. They have Mark Andrews. They they let, let go of OBJ. Now he's with Miami, and they draft Tez Walker. I feel pretty confident in the belief of Rashad Bateman. And you have to remember, he was a first-round draft pick in 2021. And, you know, that fantasy hit rate is pretty significant when you think of those first-round wide receivers hitting in the NFL. Now, he's been struggling with injuries, absolutely granted but what else have we seen is the belief in the belief in the coaching staff and when you see Jim Harbaugh or John Harbaugh excuse me talk about Rashad Bateman and this is a cool little uh resource that we use that has been growing like crazy on the Twitter sphere it's called coach speak index essentially what they do is that they look at the coaching speaking index and they kind of break it down and tell you what's the percentage truth or reliability that they're saying with their words when they're going into interviews. And you can see it here. Not only does Jim Harbaugh, John Harbaugh says, I think Rashad Bateman is going to take a big step. The ball's going to get him a lot more next year, get to him a lot more next year. Harbaugh spoke, uh, coaching speak index is 85% reliability on usage and workload, according to coaches speak, which is phenomenal. And how accurate is that? It's been pretty fun to kind of follow that. But the fact that this is a, even a resource is pretty significant as well. And the fact that John Harbaugh has been talking up Rashad Bateman, not only John Harbaugh, but we've seen the likes of Mark Andrews saying that, hey, Rashad Bateman is going to have a massive year this year going into 2024. Rashad Bateman shouldn't just be a throw-in piece on your dynasty team. He is linked 
with an elite quarterback in Lamar Jackson. He is a wide receiver, too, on a high-powered offense. Yeah, it may be a run first, but he is somebody that can open up the field. He is somebody that has an exponential, exponential route tree coming out of Minnesota, which we love from Rashad Bateman and is why he was a first-round drafted wide receiver. Okay, so keep that in mind when you're trying to either acquire Rashad Bateman or thinking about maybe, hey, I'm going to trade him away. I hope this can potentially change your mind and hope and have him you keep him going into the 2024 season. My second player on this list that I love so much that it's being overlooked and has hidden value is Michael Wilson. Okay. Obviously, the Arizona Cardinals go out and draft Marvin Harrison Jr. and rightfully so. He is one of the best or the best wide receiver coming out since people say Julio Jones. People saying since some of these best wide receivers. It, you know, that are going to be Hall of Famers um, that we've seen in the past. But then there's nobody else, okay? I mean, they go out and draft literally no one else in this draft of deep wide receivers, and it was only Marvin Harrison Jr. That, once again, speaks volumes to me, really similar to Rashad Bateman. What does this team do? Yeah, they get their elite wide receiver, but Michael Wilson was never going to be the wide receiver one. He was always going to be, you know, a wide receiver three, and now even the wide receiver two on this offense. Let's look at this depth chart. Marlon Havison Jr., right? And then in my eyes is Michael Wilson. Then you have Greg Dortch. They're bringing Zay Jones. They have Chris Moore, Zach Paschal. They have no one else on this team. They let go of Hollywood Brown. He's with now the Chiefs. They could have brought in and paid maybe for T. Higgins. They could have drafted a Jalen McMillan. They could have drafted name a, a wide receiver that you love in this draft class, right? They go draft Marvin Harrison Jr. They could have got a Roman Wilson. They could have got a Malachi Corley, a Jermaine Burton to be the wide receiver too, a Keon Coleman to be wide receiver, uh, whatever, Adnan Mitch, whatever the case may be. They could have drafted somebody else in the deep wide receiver class, and they said, no, we're sticking with my, uh, Michael Wilson. And the reason why this has been overlooked is because of the limited time that Kyler Murray did have with Michael Wilson, right? Michael Wilson played the first half of the season, obviously, with the, the quarterback carousel there with Josh Dobbs and, and so on and so forth. And then he gets hurt, and then Kyler Murray comes on, right? So they didn't cross paths, but they did cross paths in the last four games of the season where we saw a little bit of success. But there was two games that were like, whoa. And then there was another two games that was like, okay. Okay, and you can probably see that on your screen now. Weeks 15 and 16, target three to four times, no catches. That's with Kyler Murray. What happened? Um, I can tell you that they tried to target him, and it just didn't work out. Um, a lot of overthrown passes, a lot of deflected passes as well. And Michael Wilson didn't have the best two games there, but he does come back against a really good, solid defense in Philly and Seattle. Caught four out of six in a touchdown over 15 fantasy points. Very similar in Seattle week 18. Caught six out of six for 95 yards over 15 fantasy points. I mean, if he could be the wide receiver too, and I'm not even saying if he can be the wide receiver, a flex, a flex position for you and average maybe 11 to 13 fantasy points, he can grow in his role as the years goes on, right? As the 2024 season continues, because we all know Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to be peppered with targets. But what if Marvin Harrison Jr. misses the game? What happens if he has a high ankle sprain? Or what happens if he's just getting double teamed? Obviously, Marvin Harrison Jr. is a, a, an elite wide receiver that I wouldn't be concerned about that already and as a rookie. But, you, you know, Kyler Murray is going to have to result into maybe looking for somebody, some other pieces. Now, you're probably saying, I haven't mentioned Trey McBride. That's, I, I understand. I haven't mentioned him. But I'm looking at the wide receiver room specifically. I'm looking at who's going to wide receiver two on this team, not the second target, but the wide receiver two, which could be exciting here. If you can get Michael Wilson, once again, he could be available in your in your on, on your teams or in your waiver wires. He can also be somebody that you can even add on. As I've been saying, don't you don't add him on. Can they add him on to your team or in that trade option if you possibly can? All right, going into my next player that I believe has hidden value at the quarterback position. This one may be really, really low. That's Justin Fields, okay? Yes. One of the biggest conversations is that a lot of people believe Russell Wilson is going to be the starting quarterback for this team. Maybe that is the case. But I believe this is an open competition. It's whoever Mike Tomlin is going to be appointing in week one. And maybe Russell Wilson does have the edge right now. But are we or anyone else going to be surprised 
if Justin Fields is on the field in week four, week five, week six, or maybe even week eight to week 10, we can see Justin Fields in the second half of the season. That's what's exciting about this. This is where the hidden value comes, okay? Now, he may not have the same weapons or the weapon that he had in DJ Moore, but he has, I would say, a better even balance of weapons now. George Pickens, Pat Fryermuth, right? Roman Wilson, he has a good... Um, one-two punch duo and Najee Harris and Jalen Warren. But what really excites me is this offensive line. Okay, I mean, what was the biggest concern with Justin Fields when he went to the Chicago Bears? The offensive line was terrible. They were bottom five in 2025. They were actually second worst in 2022 in offensive line rankings, according to PFF. That was terrible. Now he goes to the Pittsburgh Steelers where they have invested Okay, invested a tremendous amount of, of money and draft capital in this offensive line. They get Broderick Jones this past year. They go on inside um, Isaac, I don't even want to butcher his last name, Samalo, right, from Philadelphia Eagles. They draft Zach Frazier, who's a center, right, who a lot of people thought was potentially, or at least early, early in the offseason, was most likely going to be a late first-round pick or early second. He was a middle, second-round pick for a center, which is a good, decent um good, decent value for centers in the NFL draft. And then they go out and get who a lot of people thought was one of the top three offensive linemen in this draft class, Troy Fatanu. Okay. Which is a phenomenal. This offensive line has solidified himself. At least that's our expectation and easily could be a top 10 offensive line going into the 2024 season. Now, maybe that can help Russell Wilson. Maybe that can even help Justin Fields. And that's, what's exciting about this because even once again, one of the biggest things for Justin Fields, the Chicago Bears, that man, he didn't have any time to throw. Now he can. Now he has all the time to throw. He didn't have any lanes, right? Every time he got he got hit or trying to trying to make plays, he was running ten yards back to gain another five yards. This is a little bit different. He has all the time, at least the expectation. Once again, the expectation is that he's going to have all the time in the world behind this offensive line. Once again, could potentially be a top ten projected offensive line going into the twenty twenty four season. And even if that is not the case. What do we do know that Justin Floor's floor is pretty, pretty good here with the rushing upside? Why did we love Justin Fields last year? Because of the rushing upside. The rushing upside has been there and the improvements that we saw around him. Now, he has a little bit more competition and he has a little chip on his shoulder, which is great. Maybe Russell Wilson. Can he learn something from Russell Wilson? Who, not? I'm not saying it's a similar play style, but he knows how to... He's you know, known for eluding and evading defenders back in the back in his prime, and he has a phenomenal arm, okay? So these are some things that we need to take account. If you're looking for QB3 and saying, hey, I just want some depth, I want some hidden guys with hidden value that could potentially be seeing their opportunity on the field, and that's Justin Fields going into 2024. All right, before I get into my next player, go to flogfantasy.com slash land, the best place to support what Zach and I are doing here. If you want what you see on your screen, a 2024 Ricky report, the fantasy hotline, you want a, your dynasty team reviewed. All you have to do is once again, use our promo code land, select that mother flocker tier, and we can get you set up with all of these perks and so much more. Our dynasty rankings, our redraft rankings, we're going to be having best ball rankings, potentially even Debbie rankings in the future. If once again, if you are a big Debbie player, go to flockfantasy.com, use our promo code land and unlock all those features at sign up. Going back to the wide receiver position, a guy with hidden value is Brandon Cooks, somebody that I believe has been absolutely disrespected, not only by his team, but by the fantasy community. Okay. And this is what happens with Brandon Cooks every single year. He doesn't get drafted too high. It's kind of like Tyler Lockett. He doesn't get drafted too high at all. He's always like a really good value every single time. And then he outproduces his, his fantasy production normally, right? Brandon Cooks this past year caught 54 out of 81 targets, okay, of 657 yards. He caught eight touchdowns, averaged 10.8 fantasy points per game, finished as a wide receiver at 38. A completely, completely disrespected by the community, and let me tell you why. Because of the weapons around him. Yeah, you have CeeDee Lamb, but there's no one else on this team. Jalen Tober is there. Michael Gallup is no longer there. 
They didn't another team that could have drafted another wide receiver that everyone thought that they needed a wide receiver to help CD Lamb. Could have been an Adonai Mitchell, could have been a Brian Thomas Jr. to be the wide receiver too on that team. A lot of people thought they were going to get a wide receiver and a potential running back in the second round. And that wasn't the case. They go, you know, offensive linemen, they go defensive type of players. And now Brandon Cooks could easily be a great flex option, a wide receiver, a low end wide receiver too. And why is that important? Because Brandon Cooks really didn't see his production until the second half of the season, right? I mean, like weeks, the first half of the season before the bye week, he was non-existent. Then we saw in the second half of the season, right? This is where the touchdowns started to come. This, I mean, he scored literally seven out of the eight touchdowns he scored after the bye week where he was getting the ball. And you can probably see a screenshot here. You can see, I mean, look look, look at these fancy points. 14 fancy points, 32 fancy points, 17 fancy points, 16, 10, 17, 16. We saw him really produce in that second half of the season. And that's what's exciting when you think about Brandon Cooks. You think about and you know that Dak Prescott can easily be can easily produce fancy relevant wide receivers behind CD Lamb. There's no question. Brandon Cooks from that span after his bye week was wide receiver 22. He was averaging 12.5 fantasy points per game. And that's what's exciting. He could be a good flex or even a low end wide receiver too once he is acclimated to this offense and saying, hey, I'm being, I need to be utilized. And that's exactly what I'm believing for the Dallas Cowboys to be doing here with Brandon Cooks going into the 2024 season. And last but not least, at the running back position, somebody that was had a huge ceiling going into 2023 during the NFL draft, and then it was absolutely shot down to dead, bottom of the sea, bottom of the ocean. That is Zach Charbonnet. Okay, now I know you're saying, man, you just said he's a dead asset, bottom of the ocean, bottom of the sea. What's going to be happening? We all know he's behind Kenneth Walker. I understand. What's exciting about Zach Charbonnet is that there's no ties to anyone on this offense with this new head coach, with this new offensive coordinator. Now, I am not saying that Kenneth Walker is going to be irrelevant. I am not saying that Zach Charbonnet is going to be taking all that workload. But what if? What if Zach Charbonnet could be that addition to those trades that I was saying? Just throw, just throw in Zach Charbonnet. Let me just get somebody that doesn't matter in your eyes just to see what happens. And I think when you draft Zach Charbonnet in the late in your dynasty startups or is added as a throw in in your dynasty trades, understand that this is a, this is something that, you know, it's not going to hurt you. It's not going to hurt your pocket. It's not going to hurt your fantasy team. If anything, it can help it. And like I said, this is a massive projection projection and nothing really to back this up because we haven't seen much of Zach Charbonnet on the field. There was only two games with Zach Charbonnet or Kenneth Walker missed in weeks 12 and 13 where Zach Charbonnet saw a little bit of a glimpse. Once One was against San Francisco where he scored less than 10 fantasy points, which was tough because the San Francisco 49ers has a phenomenal defense. Then he plays the Dallas Cowboys in week 13 where we saw, okay, Okay, we, we can see a little bit more, right? 19 carries, 60 yards, terrible yards per yards per attempt, right? Only three, 3.1 yards per attempt, but scores a touchdown, which really saves that day 16.9 fantasy points in that week, in week 13 against the Dallas Cowboys. I am not saying, once again, that Ryan Grubb is going to come in and be this really run-heavy offense because coming out of Washington, what, what did we see? Roma Dunze, Jalen McMillan, right? We saw Jalen Polk all really be, in reality, if we can do fantasy football for a college, I guess Debbie, they were, they were really fantasy relevant, to be completely honest with you, in those past couple of years when they were with Washington, they're with Michael Penix. Now, insert Ryan Grubb in this offense. He has three top wide receivers and Tyler Lockett, Jackson Smith and Jigba, and DK Metcalf. What can he do there? And if that opens up that field... For those three wide receivers, what can that happen? What can that be for some of these running backs? And if Kenneth Walker does go down where he has struggled with injuries with some calf strains and some hamstrings and some ankle sprains, Zach Charbonnet can easily be. And we say this all the time. Men, Kenneth Walker goes down, and I don't I don't hope this for him. Kenneth Walker goes down with ACL. Or Kenneth Walker has a high ankle sprain and is gone for four to six weeks. Zach Charbonnet can easily be a top 15 running back. 
on, on any given week. And that's what's ex exciting about Zach Charbonnet is that the what if factor and the fact that you can get him as a throw in right now for absolutely nothing and no one's necessarily thinking about Zach Charbonnet is what's exciting here. So Brandon Cooks, Zach Charbonnet, Justin Fields, Michael Wilson, and Rashad Bateman are five must hold dynasty players that you could easily have hidden value going into the 2024 season. Comment down below, let me know what you think. And as always, it's all love. Now that those idiots are done talking, who needs some rankings? Hell yeah, I need some rankings. Then use promo code LAND, L-A-N-D, for 30% off any membership at flockfantasy.com. Oh. It's so easy, even your grandma could scan that QR code right there.